They call me the Dave Meltzer of Scott Fishbowl. This is the worst. Good morning, Fantasyland. Motazita Banakasi. Welcome into the worst fantasy show. I got a little bit extra energy at uh, 6 14 a.m. Eastern Standard Time here in Saint Jean, Quebec. That's like the most annoying thing when someone sips us. Uh, but I'm having my morning coffee. I am pre recording this show because uh, I will be uh, dealing with a move on Sunday. So we are rating Scott Fishbowl teams with star ratings, just like good old Uncle Dave Meltzer. Uh, so if you are not familiar, if you're not a wrestling fan out there, basically, um, after like every pay-per-view, uh, Dave Meltzer of Wrestling Observer Newsletter, who has been a wrestling journalist for like decades, uh, you know, he is renowned in the space. He delivers his star ratings uh, for matches, which... <laughs> It, they kind of range all over the place. Uh, they go up to six, technically speaking. Um, I will be capping at five stars. Also, he does quarter stars. We will be capping at half stars. So uh, the maximum rating that you can get is five stars. The lowest rating that you could get is half a star. So uh, we will get right into rating the Scott fish bowl teams oops let's add to the stage here we go here we go so the first one uh is actually coming in from dm uh shout out to at underscore bam underscore 19 with their pick from the their team from the 106 so I was also choosing from the 106, and I'm very jealous that Jalen Hurts fell to you. Uh, I was able to get Patrick Mahomes at that spot, so Jalen Hurts, smash pick, that's obvious. Amon Ross, same Brown, feeling like we're jiving right now. I went with, um, it was, uh, Jesus, uh, AJ Brown that fell to me in this spot. So I'm already loving your draft um, in terms of the first couple of rounds. So Jalen Hurts, Amon Ross, St. Brown, Kyle Pitts in this format, potentially a smash. Love it. I like Devon A. Shane um, in this format. I think getting him at the 406 is not bad value either at the RB10 spot. And I like what you did later. We'll talk about that. Um, but Devonta Smith. I'm not huge on Devonta Smith, but I like the value here as your second wide receiver paired with Jalen Hurts. And then coming back with Jared Goff to stack with Amon Ra, that's a beautiful move. And I think Jared Goff specifically is underrated this year because he has a smash opening schedule uh, the first four weeks of the season. He's got like 12 or 13 dome games this year that he's going to be playing. Um, and the team itself, I think, is running at peak capacity. The offensive line is just continuing to improve, even though they were one of the best units last year. Because they're such a young team, the offensive line is still growing together and still improving, which is kind of scary because Jared Goff, when he's upright, is absolutely deadly. So I love that move. And then Amari Cooper here. Amari Cooper so underrated, and getting him as your wide receiver three, I feel like you have a really strong – core of your team here now granted in scott fishbowl it's important to remember that the roster construct is such that it's basically all flex so it's quarterback running back wide receiver tight end and then five flex and a super flex uh so i like that you went wide receiver I'll bring up the scoring after. I should have done it before, but after we're done this team, we'll look take a quick look at the scoring just to reconfirm why I am so in on running backs and especially loading up on several running backs that you can uh, load up into those flex spots. 
But for going wide receiver route, I think Amon Ross, St. Brown, Devonta Smith, and Amari Cooper are very three very strong uh, wide receivers. And then I love that you got Xavier Worthy, especially with the potential kick returning upside in the Scott Fish format. Now, I'm not big on targeting exclusively kick returners, and we'll talk about that later with one of your picks. But I do like looking at wide receivers that potentially have the kick return role as an extra bonus, a boost to their value. So they're still going to be operating primarily as a wide receiver, but they'll get that added bonus from the kick return. So I like that. Uh, And then Raheem Mostert at the 907 here. My face is covering up the draft capital at this point, excuse me. Uh, but Raheem Mostert uh, is a great value and pairs, obviously, with Devon Ashain. So if you lose one, you still have the other. Uh, Christian Watson at 10.06 is a great value, uh, especially because if he just stays healthy, he will return on that investment. So I like that. And he's, at this point, your wide receiver 4-5. Khalil Shakir I like. Now, this is where it does get you know, Dicey is your running back room because outside of a Shane and Mostert, which does lock down that single RB spot, you know, Trey Benson and then skipping to Chuba Hubbard and Ty Chandler. These are three guys that are essentially high upside backups. They will crack your lineups at times. You may not feel like you got the true value of them for the entire season though. I do have uh, Trey Benson also on my Scott Fish team. and But he for me, he was like my RB4. So I'm hoping that he can come along and join my platoon of running backs in the flex spot. Whereas in this format, you're essentially going to depend on him to be your RB2 because what there are going to be weeks where you feel good about starting a Shane and Mostert. There's going to be a lot of weeks where you don't feel good about doing that. And you're going to want someone else in that flex spot. Chuba Hubbard. I like because he's going to have the opportunity at the beginning of the season before Jonathan Brooks is available. I get that. It's just not sexy and it's going to go away. I think those are two things, but you know, for a 14th round pick, you get that first chunk of the season, you play him and then you move on. Ty Chandler, I'm not big on Ty Chandler, but he will get touches because Aaron Jones is not going to get like uh, a crazy workload. Uh, workload, workload. Um, I think as uh, like a primary running back, I think him and Ty Chandler will split it. But Aaron Jones is going to be far more efficient, look way better with his touches. I love that you got your quarterback three very late. And in the form of two guys where you were able to pick up Gardner Minshew and then double up on Aiden O'Connell a couple rounds later, I actually just did the exact same thing, but in Warrior Bowl. In the Warrior Bowl, I punted quarterback in my in Superflex. So in the 10th and 11th, I took uh, Russell Wilson in Fields. And then when I came back in the – it was at the 13 and 15, I took Minshew and then I took O'Connell. So – Kind of same thinking there. I like that. Naheem Hines and Dylan Laube. I'm assuming that these are potential pass catching running backs with kick return upside. Maybe. I don't super love that you took two kickers. I really feel like you could have just taken the one kicker uh, and maybe taken an an extra shot on a wide receiver or a running back or someone. And uh, Cavante Turpin is completely useless in this format. Um, Regardless of the fact that he's getting kick return, He's not a wide receiver. Like in no format is he going to be treated like a wide receiver. If you look at his absolute best output, wide receiver 95 is probably what you're going to actually get in terms of his production. And that's like with the return yards factored in. And I think there's also this misnomer, like if they do change the rules that much, we might see different personnel completely. Like we might see just completely different people doing kick returns at time and even further reducing the value of a guy like Cavante Turpin, who is exclusively depending on those kick returns. So I, not a fan of that pick. We skipped over Luke Musgrave. I do like that as a second tight end. I feel like with the Scott fish settings definitely could have gone heavier on the tight ends and running backs, but overall I like the core of this team. I love the quarterbacks. I think the wide receiver room is really strong. I think you'll be able to attack waivers 
Um, so, you know, we're starting off maybe a, I feel like the, the person who goes first in a rating uh, show like this always gets knocked a little because it's like I don't want to give them a perfect rating right off the bat. Um, but I think because of kind of the, the weekend running back room, the lack of depth at tight end beyond Musgrave, I'm going with four stars. Solid four stars to start this off. And we'll just bring up again the Scottish scoring before we continue here while I am trying to find the post that I have the other teams on. But uh, I, and I made this mistake yesterday uh, doing a worst interview. Shout out to uh, Big, uh, Big Bone Did FFB. If you guys want to give him a follow. Um, he reminded me that it's actually six point touchdown in Scott Fish. I thought for some reason in my head it was four point, and then I realized that's because that's in Warrior Bowl. Um, well, that came out weird. Warrior, yeah, that's better. All right. Um, so yeah, in the Warrior Bowl. Um, so. Um, the, also the pat the passing is nerfed in terms of the passing yardage. So that was a consideration also. Um, and the, this is really the rushing and receiving, I think is getting overlooked. It's one point for 10 yards and a point for a first down and 0.25 for rush attempt. And then the fact that, um, the receptions for, running back is also 0.5 PPR, like potentially, you know, uh, that means if they get a reception for a first down, like there's your extra point, right? Compared to, I know it's PPR for the wide receiver, like full PPR. And that's why a lot of people have been attacking the wide receiver. I think you'll find more consistency. I think the running backs and especially the running backs that are able to load up on the receptions are really going to break this format, but we will see. Man, I post a lot of crap. I am almost to the Scott Fish uh, things. Uh, the other thing to notice, like I said, the special teams, I think being a little bit overrated. Though five yards, one point for five yards per return. So technically speaking, then that's like saying a 50 yard return is 10 points. But then it says 0.2 per. I'm confused. One point for five yards per return, 0 0.2 per. Am I, or oh, whatever. Uh, maybe I'm the one that's uh, got it wrong and uh, Scott Fish ended up being worth way more than I think in terms of the returning. I did see a guy who did like the all return method and I don't know. I think that's a little crazy. I think loading up on the pass catching running backs because CMC in this format, what I was looking at last year, he scored like 470 fantasy points, I think, where it was like so far ahead of like the next person. Uh, I am wishing I would have bookmarked this. We got to be pretty close to this by now, though. No, we're way too far if we're down in July 13th. All right, you know it's an easier way to do this, actually, now that I'm realizing, which is really, I should have thought about this first. Let's go through my notifications instead. Mm. Oh, good Lord. Yeah, now I'm wishing I would have had this queued before the show. You know what? While I am trying to find this damn thing, let's take a 30-second dance party.
Hey, we got there. All right. So let us go through these comments. Uh, so shout out to Sir, Gre uh, Sir Gregory Kellogg, uh, Gregory L. Kellogg on Twitter. Uh, asked me if I would revisit these after the season. Uh, I will try to remember and do that, and I will. And then they asked me who reviews the reviewer. And I said, hey, I already got my review done by at the FF Universe. So shout out to those guys if you're also looking for a review. Uh, but we'll start here with my buddy Zach Attack at FF Chalupa Batman. Make sure you give him a follow. So uh, he went bully tight end off the start from the 103 position. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, Trey McBride. Mark Andrews, Kyle Pitts, loving that start. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, again, in this format, potentially could break the fantasy. Um, I think the only two players I see, maybe three, let's say, that I could see approaching Christian McCaffrey numbers this year, Bijan Robinson, Brees Hall, and Jameer Gibbs in that order. And then he comes back, he gets his first wide receiver and uh, quarterback with a Cooper Cup, Matt Stafford stack. I don't hate that. Gets two more running backs in Ramondre Stevenson and Najee Harris. Calvin Ridley and Will Levis stack at 9 and 10. I actually really like that. Um, and then getting Christian Watson here as a wide receiver three with potential upside. And in the 11th round, uh, late too, late 11, 11, 10. Marvin Mims. Maybe see some receiving work and maybe the kick return work is actually worth more than I think. So we'll see how that works out. I love the upside of Marshawn Lloyd and Tyrone Tracy here. Xavier Gibson. That's the another kick return pick. Jermaine Burton potentially could become the wide receiver three for Cincinnati, though I do think he's going to have to actually beat out Andre Yosevas, who is a sneaky deep sleeper for me. Uh, Elijah Mitchell to cover up that Christian McCaffrey just in case. Kevontae Turpin. I think Turpin still is going to be overvalued uh, even with the current scoring settings. But when you're down from rounds uh, 15 to 22, like these guys potentially won't even be on your roster by the end of the year. You'll have dropped them for waiver ads. Um, so I'm not going to grade too harshly based on your rounds 15 to 22, just to be perfectly honest. Um, but rounded out with Deontay Foreman, uh, Cordero Patterson, who could be kind of annoying in Pittsburgh, but also useful. He gets his place kicker with the second to last pick and then takes Anthony Gold um, with that very, very last pick. So I really like this build. I love the bully tight end. I love the, I love that he has a decent running back room and I think people were per perceive the wide receiver room as being weakened. But again, it's full PPR, and you would only need to start one technically because in all the other spots, you could have running backs, tight ends, and kick returners in your flex positions. So maybe I'm a little biased for this one, but we're going to go with four and a half stars. Four and a half stars. Next up. Shout out to Fantasy Dads. Made their own graphic, even. Uh, so, uh, we don't have the picks here. We'll just go through the team. That's fine. Dak Prescott, Saquon Barkley, Tyree Kill, Jake Ferguson. So, I love the Dak, Jake, Fergie stack. Uh, Ty J. Spears, I'm not a believer. Jaden Reed, I do like. Keenan Allen, Xavier Worthy, and Calvin Ridley. Solid. Uh, but kick off. Tell the women to get back in the kitchen. This fucking asshole. Well, he's a good kicker, though. Um, I like that he got Justin Herbert as the second quarterback. I think Herbert and Dak are solid uh, quarterback room, especially with Aaron Rodgers, if he can just stay healthy. We get another dose of the Mims. Uh, Braxton Berrios, I have to assume that's because he has a potential kick returning role. I think he gets dropped. I could even see him getting cut. Um, I think... I am thinking of the right person, right? He's the fucking former Jets guy. He's on the Dolphins now. It's like, though I will say Taj Washington uh, just ended up on season long IR. So maybe he makes the team and 
But I think Malik Washington could potentially take that kick returning role. We'll see. Rico Dowdle, if he carves out a role uh, in the running back room for Dallas, okay. Hunter Henry. I like Hunter Henry as a really underrated tight end three um, because he's definitely going to get some looks from the rookie tight end, uh, Drake May. And even if it's Jacoby Brissett, I think Brissett will do a pretty good job of targeting the tight end position. So I like that. Brandon Cooks and Jahan Dotson to round this one out. Uh, There's a lot to like here. I don't know. I feel like there's a, a lot to like. There's not exactly a bunch of stuff that I love. Like, I do really like Saquon and Tyreek. I, those are pretty obvious. I do like that he pushed quarterback. I see a lot of value through the whole board. But there's just, I think it's like in the middle pack of like, there's just, I like the players, but I don't love them. We're going to go four stars, four stars conservatively. Still a really good score and a really good team, though. All right. Uh, let's get on to Joe Pepe at JPEP20 from the 102. Uh, we start with full Colts attack, Anthony Richardson, Jonathan Taylor. So I don't know how I feel about that, to be honest. I think you're kind of limiting your upside in a sense because Jonathan Taylor, not exactly known as a pass catcher. He can do it, but it's not really like his thing. So, you know, you have Anthony Richardson and Jonathan Taylor kind of eating off of each other's plate. And Anthony Richardson just scares the hell out of me. At 102, uh, there's no fucking chance I would have made that pick. I can tell you that much. Uh, I would have gone with Jalen Hurts, who is basically just the best version of Anthony Richardson, in my opinion. I even would have gone with Lamar Jackson over Anthony Richardson. You get the same uh, game-breaking ability of the rushing upside from those guys without, to me, the massive risk of you know, the guy being essentially in his sophomore season and really it's not just the fact of, oh, I think he could get injured. It's that he is decidedly saying, I am not going to change my play style. You know, if you're going to run face first in the NFL linebackers for an entire season, you're not going to make it through that season. You need to learn how to slide and get out of bounds as a quarterback. Maybe that's just fluff. Maybe, um, He'll get coached up and stop doing dumb shit like that. I'm not, I'm just not a fan of Anthony Richardson. I think people are really, because of the potential of the game breaking fantasy quarterback for rushing upside and because of the nerfed passing yards, I think people are overreacting a little bit to Anthony Richardson. Um, but maybe I'm wrong, you know? Uh, and if I am, then it's a, it's a smash pick, but I feel like at QB2, you drafted him like he has to hit now. It's You drafted him at ceiling. You drafted him above Hertz and Lamar even. Um, I'm assuming Josh, if it was Josh Allen that went one. And if it wasn't, then even worse, you potentially took him over Josh Allen, who I don't even really like this year, but I like him more than Anthony Richardson. Um, so very risky pick, big risk, big reward. But I think, again, coming back with Jonathan Taylor kind of – caps you a little bit there i love that puka fell all the way to 311 that's crazy um and then isaiah pacheco and kenneth walker kind of uh solidifying that running back room david montgomery and raheem Mostert. so i do love that you attacked running backs early um and we'll have the ability to load up those flex spots with running backs i think christian kirk is a very viable wide receiver too uh I mean, J.J. McCarthy, I would have preferred uh, a more solid QB3 here because I think even if McCarthy gets the job, I don't know how good he's going to be in this format. But it's, you know, with Richardson and Stafford, you're hoping those guys hold up. Like, I would have preferred even waiting, um, or I think this is around the range you would have to take, like, a Russell Wilson or even waiting a bit longer and taking uh, like a Gardner Minshew or, or Aiden O'Connell or like one of the, you know, one of these other kind of journeyman quarterbacks. Yeah. McCarthy scares me a little bit here. He could be a dead spot on your roster for a hot minute. And then by the time he finally starts, like 
if he's out there getting like 250 for two and that's his ceiling, we'll see. We'll see. Brian Thomas Jr. at 12.02. I love that pick. Curtis Samuel, um, definitely he, he's going to have a role in the offense. He's going to be usable. Uh, Xavier Gibson again, Dontavian Wicks. I like Wicks' upside. This is a little high for the kicker. I know the kickers get good scores, but Jake Moody here, I think he could have waited on kicker and got just as good of a kicker. I love the Colby Parkinson pick. That is one of my tight end sleepers that I really love. And Daniel Bellinger. Um, you know, for having punted tight end, basically, I like that you got a bunch of value picks in Muth, Parkinson, and Bellinger. I don't know how that will actually play in terms of how they stack up versus some of these other tight ends in this super tight end premium format where it's one and a half PPR and with the first down bonuses and everything. And then I'm assuming again, the Kane Nuangu is kick returner material. Cordell Patterson, kind of same thing. I'm seeing that as a sleeper pick in Scott Fish. Devin Duvernay and Anthony Gold again. I don't know how I feel about the kick returner stuff. Um, overall, though, this team, really solid, but really scary. I'm going to give you three and a half stars here. Three and a half stars. I know you're like, oh, but that's the lowest rating on the show so far, Jack. Yes, I know. But Anthony Richardson scares the bejesus out of me. And this is my fucking show. <laughs> uh, but no, it, it is really uh, Anthony Richardson scares me. The stack with Jonathan Taylor, I don't feel great about that because you're kind of eating into yourself. Um, and then I think you know, Kenneth Walker and David Montgomery, they're solid, good running backs, but I don't feel like they have high ceilings. Um, and then your tight end room definitely is the weakest aspect of this. And that could be a fatal flaw in Scott Fishbowl. So that's where I'm coming from. But it's still, you know, you don't win at the draft. I just said this on the show last night. You don't win at the draft. You win by attacking waivers all year and really setting your lineups and being on top of things. All right, on to the next one. At NRG51628, Neil Gray from the 107. CJ Stroud, Amon Ra St. Brown, and Caleb Williams to start. Now that is bold, bold, bold. I think in the passing, uh, with the with the format being what it is, nerfed passing yards, you still get the touchdowns. I'm worried about C.J. Stroud. Stroud in this format to pay off the ADP feels like he needs 40 touchdowns. I, 40 feels lofty. I think people kind of have like Madden brain sometimes when they look at quarterbacks and the ability to throw 40 passing touchdowns. Like that's just an easy thing. And I get it. He's got weapons in digs. Nico Collins and Tank Dell. But then it's like after that, it's Dalton Schultz and, you know, Joe Mixon out of the backfield. I I think maybe he's being overrated a little bit. And Caleb Williams, a rookie quarterback that high, who doesn't have the pure rushing upside of a Jaden Daniels. I, there's, me personally, I wouldn't have been able to make that pick. I, I just couldn't have done it. Uh, Chris Olave, I'm out on Chris Olave. Rashad White, uh, at that ADP, I'm not super into it either. Brock Bowers, that's my tight end, and I don't even like it because, again, just the risk of a rookie tight end is massive. Uh, Stephon Diggs, I do like that pairing with CJ Stroud. Actually, I think most people think Diggs is like the odd man out in Houston, and I disagree. I actually think it's going to be – Diggs and then Nico and then Tank Dell. And uh, I don't think people are properly rating Stefan Diggs. So I like that pick. And then you get Aaron Jones and Austin Eckler, another JJ McCarthy pick here. And again, this is where there's having already taken Caleb Williams, there's no way I would have also taken JJ McCarthy here. I would have wanted literally any veteran quarterback going next to him, like Derek Carr. Um, who else was going on that? Like Bryce Young, uh, who had a bad rookie season and could potentially really outperform his ADP this year. Um, like 
just the fact that he's a rookie and that he's not even guaranteed the starting job over Sam Darnold, and that's your that's your guy in case Caleb Williams doesn't work out. That's scary to me. Javante Williams is nice here. Uh, I'm I don't believe in Cole Komet. Uh, and again, when your tight end one is a rookie, and now you present yourself with your tight end two in case the tight end one doesn't work, like Cole Komet now has three legitimate wide receivers that are better than him in front of him. To me, that caps his ceiling. I think he could still pro- outproduce this ADP though. So I don't hate the pick. I just, I don't see the upside. And then you take Chuba Hubbard, Justin Tucker. I love Justin Tucker. He is a great kicker. He's the best kicker in the NFL. He's overvalued in this format. I made this, I did this last year. That's how I know. And the kicking scoring really didn't change much from last year to this year. Last year it was pretty outrageous. This year it's pretty outrageous. There was no, if I could have gone and fixed my one thing for my draft last year, and there were lots to fix from last year. And I still made top 250 because I, again, attacked waivers and stayed on top of things. And yeah, I made some lucky picks where I had Trey McBride and Devon Asian already on my roster. But then I also picked up Puka and Tucker Craft and some other guys along the way. Um, but anyways, uh, I digress. I took Justin Kick, uh, Justin Kicker. I took Justin Tucker early last year, and I felt like I really paid for it because there are so many kickers you could have got later that do the same thing um, in terms of just like fantasy production. So, not a huge fan of the Justin Tucker pick, especially this early. And then Darnell Mooney, Xavier Leggett, uh, Bucky Irving. Okay, it pairs with Rashad White, um, but I'm not. I'm just not super in on Tampa Bay in general. I feel like that team could just regress, especially, you know, having lost uh, Canales. Um, but we'll see. Jelani Woods, Odell Odell Beckham, to me, is wholly irrelevant in this format. A.J. Dillon, Jalen Tolbert, Drew Lock. I like Drew Lock. I think the Drew Lock pick is super underrated at 22. You know, I'm sorry. You're not going to like this rating. To me, this one... Has a lot of uh, holes and problems. We're going two stars on this one. Two stars. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Shooter McGavin. You this if you're in the Shooter McGavin division, uh, this this was a happy Gilmore build because you got fucked at the end. Like, um, I'm just again, I'm looking at like individually speaking. If I look at the quarterback room, for example, like I said, C.J. Stroud. I, I like that, but I feel like he's drafted at optimum output already. And then you combine two rookies and then Drew Locke. You know, I look at the wide receiver room. Amon Ross St. Brown, love that. Chris Olave, don't love that. Stefan Diggs, like that. And then Darnell Mooney and Xavier Leggett and Odell Beckham and Jalen Tolbert. To me, those guys are going to probably end up on waivers at some point. Um your tight end room after like Bowers is such a scary option. And I know because I have Bowers. And so I, I would have wanted kind of a more veteran presence, uh, maybe someone with a little more upside and path to relevance. Like again, Cole Command having so many guys in front of him. Like, <coughs> excuse me, a Pat Fryermuth would have been perfect for a build like this, where he's like pretty clearly the second option in that passing game, and he's now got a quarterback upgrade. So that's kind of where I'm looking at. But, and then, like I was saying, with the running backs, I just feel like it falls off a cliff. I feel like the kicker went too early. I do, I I like Rashad White to Javante. That four pack I'm okay with. And Shuba, you know, will be relevant for the first like six weeks or until Jonathan Brooks is there. But unfortunately, this is just, um, I think, one of those things of different strokes for different folks. Um, A lot of these players just aren't really for me. That's why the rating, just to give you a a little bit of reasoning. So I'm not just hating on you, Neil Gray. All right, let's move on here. At FF Coach Dan, Dan LaMagna, from the 109. And uh, getting Bijan Robinson at the 109, I love that. That is huge value. And then look at this. CJ Stroud in this draft actually went a full round later um, at QB7. So also in the last one was drafted QB5. This one drafted QB7. 
So even if I'm not the biggest believer in CJ Stroud, I think he has the upside to match, you know, a second round ADP at least, and maybe potentially outperform at, I just, you know, people who are just chalking him in for 40, 50 touchdowns. I think that's a little crazy. Um, I love the Jameer Gibbs pick pairing him with Bijan. I think that is potentially huge, huge upside. Um, because again, with the pass catching running backs in this format, the fact that they can get a first down running and receiving, and the fact that they get the 0.5 on the receiving and they get the 0.25 on every carry, you know, it, it adds up, it adds up more than you think. So I really like pass catching running backs in this format. Caleb Williams. I, we just talked about why I am hesitant in a format like this to take a guy like Caleb Williams. Chris Olave, DK Metcalf, George Pickens. That's a solid three pack of wide receivers, though. I'm not that in on Chris Olave, admittedly. And also, I don't know. Um, I saw he was on the pop and I have not heard any news. I haven't heard any of the outlets talking about it. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, so just uh, another thing to monitor of if he is not available for the beginning of the season, like I'm even less touching him at ADP in any kind of redraft format. Um, and then, so after Pickens, we get Fryermuth, which I like Tony Pollard. I like Roma Dunes. Okay. You pair with Caleb Williams, got some upside there. Marvin Mims, solid, uh, Taysom Hill. I think Taysom Hill, very underrated. He's listed as a as a quarterback. Um, I think you can play him as a tight end, though. I have to double check that in on the sleeper. But assuming that you get him as a tight end, also, I do love that uh, that tight end hat because he Jawan Johnson uh, hurt his foot, so he's not going to be available for the beginning of the season. I think Taysom Hill going to see an annoying amount of work. Uh, Jamison Williams, okay. Tyler Conklin, okay. Uh, I think Jamo being a little over overrated, maybe he makes the leap finally. Um, the team doesn't seem like they're too enamored with it. I think this offense is still going to go primarily through Amon Ra, Laporta, Gibbs, and then everybody else's auxiliary pieces. And Tyler Conklin, um, I think, I think it's overrated how often and effectively Aaron Rodgers has used tight ends throughout his career. And I know he hasn't always had like super solid tight ends, but it's like he, he uses the tight end as kind of an, uh, an outlet as opposed to a primary target. And so, yes, they have some value, but they, I feel like they have capped upside. So I'm not huge on Tyler Conklin and uh, this feels a little early to have taken him. Uh, Brandon Aubrey, if you're going to take a, like, again, you took two kickers and Daniel Carlson in this format probably is going to score this. Like I could see Daniel Car Carlson returning to being the number one kicker in fantasy. And you took him with the last pick. There was no reason to have to take Brandon Aubrey here at 15. Uh, I like Wandale and Tyrone Tracy, Luke McCaffrey. Okay. Name value, potential upside, maybe Braylon Allen. Anything happens to Brees Hall. I do like Braylon Allen's upside. Uh, Trey Tucker here late. Tommy Tremble, that's irrelevant. Um, he's I Jatavian Sanders is a better tight end already, in my opinion, than Tommy Tremble and should be able to take that job from him by training camp. So there's things I like about this team. Like I love the running backs, and I really like the wide receivers outside of Chris Olave but the, I cannot get around these tight ends and the kicker kind of the early kicker pick, I feel like was, you know, a reach, especially because again, you got Daniel Carlson later. You didn't need to do that, but I feel like this is a solid three star build solid three stars here. All right. We got to pick up the speed on these a little bit. Cause I got like 50 of them to get through. I'm definitely not doing them all on this one uh, pre record by the way, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this pre-record. I'm doing this in the morning. And then what I'm going to do is I've got a half day today, uh, taking my dog to the vet just for checkup shots, no biggie. Uh, but when I get home, I'm going to pre-record the second half of this and I'll release it as two episodes. I think what I'm going to do is release 
this one early as a bonus, and then we'll release the other one on Sunday at the regular time because I'll be moving. All right, DC Who's Your Girl at DC Who's Your Girl? Stacy Glansman, come on down. You're the next contestant on Get My Scott Fishbowl Draft Rated. All right, so Patrick. Mahomes at 106. I also had Patrick Mahomes fall to me at 106. So I obviously like that pick. Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown, solid as a rock. Garrett Wilson, uh, as long as Aaron Rodgers is healthy, it's a solid pick. Isaiah Pacheco, that was also my uh, first running back um, that I ended up taking. Uh, Jared Goff. I love Jared Goff as a second quarterback. I talked about earlier on the show that uh, the potential for his season um being like even top five because of the first four weeks being a good schedule and he has like 12 or 13 dome games uh, and the offensive line being young even though they were great last year should still even take another step forward uh so love jared goff here this is where i see i got sniped on jake ferguson and that's why i ended up having to take brock bowers as my one this was what i was trying to do though i wanted to double up uh, uh, double up on Jake Fergie, Licious, and Brock Bowers. So I love this tight end uh, two pack because you get the upside of Bowers, but you get the so solid consistency of Jake Ferguson, who I believe is firmly entrenched as the second target in the Dallas passing game behind CD Lamb. And then Zamir White, I like him. Deontay Johnson, that's solid as a third wide receiver. Zach Moss. Jalen Warren, I'm more in on Najee Harris, but Jalen Warren, you got him a little bit later than usual, I feel like. So I like this value at 11.07. Marvin Mims, Gardner Minshew. I love Minshew as the third quarterback, potentially. And you didn't uh, end up taking O'Connell, which is fine. Um, you're basically betting on the fact that Minshew wins that job. And if he doesn't, he'll hit waivers. Tyler Lockett being completely overlooked. I like that pick. Jaleel McLaughlin has some upside. Pop Douglas. Gesicki. I think Gesicki has sneaky upside in Cincinnati's uh, passing game, especially because Eric All, the rookie that they drafted out of uh, Iowa, which is tight end U, he's starting on Pop. So he's not even uh, cleared for training camps right now. So Gesicki might be a sneaky receiving option. And then getting some backup running backs here, Khalil Herbert, Keaton Mitchell, Evan Hall. Don't. I like that. Khalif Raymond. Khalif Raymond is a guy being underrated in terms of his ability to get, um, yes, he is, you know, operating as a kick returner at times, but he also has some receiving chops. He will get you like 500 receiving yards and five receiving touchdowns here and there, you know, like on a high on the season. Um, so the fact that he's giving you that little bit of extra juice in the receiving game and also um, in the kick return game, that's the kind of player that I want to take a late shot on, maybe plug into my lineup because maybe he catches, you know, a long bomb for 50 yards and then also gets like a, a nice kick return uh, game. So you kind of start stacking those two things together. That's where you find the value. And then Tez Walker at your very last pick here, if he makes the starting roster and he's a starting wide receiver, that's, that's money. So I really like this build. Um, we are back up. I'm going to go all the way up to four and a half stars on this one because I don't think there's really anything I can nitpick. Um, I love the quarterback room. I love the running backs. I mean, I would say the running backs are maybe the weakest aspect, but because you have Pacheco, White, and Moss, that's a solid enough like three pack. And then you have all like the backups with upside in Warren, McLaughlin, Herbert, Mitchell, and Hall. And I think, you know, especially with like Mitchell and Hull, if they're irrelevant, you just drop them and get the next guys off waiver. So I like the versatility that this gives you. Yeah, four and a half stars here. We are back in the green, baby. Shout out to Stacey Glansman. All right, let's go main event style with Gregory L. Kellogg in the Harry Stamper division. Um, so also from the 106. Also took Mahomes, then took Dalton Kincaid, which I love that he got Kincaid. Uh, I the only thing is, and I'll tell you right now, you can see on the board, wish he would have maybe came back on another tight end a little bit earlier. 
Um, but I do not hate that if you're going to go with one tight end, you go with the guy you believe will finish tight end one. I know that Greg believes that Dalton Kincaid potentially finishes tight end one. So I don't hate that. Uh, Travis Etienne, Isaiah Pacheco, solid. Marquise Brown, Debo Samuel, very solid. Deshaun Watson is a great value at 707 here. <laughs> Look, I hate him as much as the next guy, especially as a Steelers fan. But it, if he can play a full season and play that full season, not even at full capacity of what he was doing in Houston, if he can do it at 70% of what he was doing, 70 to 80% of what he was doing in Houston, just last the entire season, he'll outproduce this ADP. So I, I don't like, I don't hate that at all. Uh, Najee Harris, solid. Xavier Worthy. I don't know if I would have taken both Kansas City wide receivers, but the fact that Worthy fell and has the return upside, I don't hate it. Uh, Ty J Spears and Blake Corum. I'm very in love with Blake Corum. I think if God forbid anything happens to Kyron Williams, Blake Corum immediately becomes a, a league winner. Uh, another Marvin Mims pick here. Jaleel McLaughlin, Josh Downs, Kamani Vidal. I love Vidal's upside. Roman Wilson. Now you're speaking my language, Greg. I got Roman Wilson shares falling out of my ears. Roman Wilson in the 16th as potentially the wide receiver two for the Pittsburgh Steelers stepping into that Deontay Johnson role. That is... Money. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes. Hey, it worked. All right. Easy money. Come on. And then we get uh, Jermaine Burton, Cameron Dicker, Rashad Bateman, uh, Carson Wentz, Hayden Hurst, and Dylan Laube rounding out his draft. Uh, I have, I don't understand the Carson Wentz pick at all. Uh, and I'll say this because I I don't like holding my own backup quarterback, which sounds really stupid, but I just don't see a world where Patrick Mahomes goes down in any shape or format and you're happy putting fucking Carson Wentz in there. Like, I would have taken, and at this spot, I just would have taken the shot on any other backup quarterback that I thought had a chance to start. So I look at, um, again, shout out, I think it was Stacey Glansman took, uh, or maybe it was someone else took drew lock, uh, at 22. I would have much preferred if this was a drew lock pick. Cause then I'd be like, Oh yeah, Daniel Jones might not be ready for the beginning of the season. You have a third quarterback. I get it. Boom. Um, I would have preferred seeing Jameis Winston here. If you're going to back up a quarterback out of the two that you have, Mahomes is not the one I want to back up. Deshaun Watson is the one I want to back up. He's the guy that's been missing time and looking bad. So I, you know, I'm hammering him on his 20th pick of the draft. Not like it actually matters in the grand scheme, but I think this is going to, you know, Wentz is going to end up on waivers and you could have taken a better backup quarterback, you know, Greg being a hall of famer and as good as he is, I'm going to nitpick him a little bit here. Um, and then Hayden Hurst, like, I just don't see the upside for any tight end in that system. And Hayden Hurst, is the definition of unrealized potential in the NFL, uh, considering that he is now officially like he's been with the Ravens and the Panthers and now the Chargers. It's like this guy's a journeyman. He He's capped at what he can do. So I, I think he could have got a better tight end too earlier in the draft. And I think the, the backup quarterback pick being completely nonsensical, I'm going to dock you for those two things, Greg. But still, I like a lot about your build here. We're going to go with four stars. Four stars. I think that's solid. All right. Next up, and we'll see how many. I'm going to try and rapid fire a couple of these because there's like 50. So we're going to try and get through as many as we can. And then on the next episode, whether it takes an hour, hour and a half or two hours, we're going all the way to the end. We're going to cut this one around an hour. Hmm. All right. Dynasty DG at FF Dynasty DG. From the 103. Now this, I like this already uh, off the top because I love Jalen Hurts and Jaden Daniels as a two-pack for your quarterback room because of the potential rushing upside and ability to break fantasy in this format. You come back, get Travis Etienne. 
and Marvin Harrison Jr. and Joe Mixon, solid. Jake Ferguson is one of my favorite tight end targets. Uh, I really think he has top five upside in the Dallas offense. Ramondre Stevenson and Najee Harris. Uh, I really like those picks. I have Ramondre on my team. I think Najee, people are a little scared about Najee, but, um, you know, Arthur Smith being there, Arthur Smith runs the highest two tight end sets in the NFL. Uh, a lot of those are out of single, uh, run, single back sets, uh, power sets which are really good for Najee Harris. That's Najee Harris's game. That's where he eats. The the All the crap they were doing out of shotgun formation with Matt Cannon last year, that's why Najee sucked at the beginning of the year. So if, if you're telling me we're going to get the power offense right from the beginning, Jalen Warren's going to be the auxiliary piece that comes in on those shotgun formations, but Najee should carry the load here. So I like Najee a lot. And then you get Roma Dunes. Now this is where... It's getting a little sketchy for me. Your wide receiver room, and if there was a position that you're going to punt, I'm actually okay with it being wide receiver, but taking Marvin Harrison Jr. and then also following up with Roma Dunes, another rookie, I think I would have looked more for a veteran presence to kind of counterbalance uh, the rookie. And then you get Taysom Hill and Austin Eckler. Those are solid picks. Nick Chubb, if he's able to you know, bounce back and start this year, I think is great. Uh, Josh Downs, Xavier Gibson, Rico Dowdle, Ricky Pearsall, again, another rookie. A little overloaded on the rookie wide receivers, which I had a problem with too. I took a shit ton of rookie wide receivers, but I took all of them late. Like it was Lad McConkey was my wide receiver three. And then I took a, I had Roman Wilson and Malik Washington and a couple other guys, but they were all kind of late picks. Uh, Ray Davis has some nice upside. Um, I still, I'm super in on James Cook and I still think Ray Davis could have upside because of how much they are going to want to run the ball. Uh, Dorch, Jelani Woods, Jake Moody, Luke McCaffrey, and Ray Ray McLeod. This one, solid three and a half star build here because I really like your quarterback room. I really like Jake Ferguson. I wish he would have got a better backup tight end. I like the running back room a lot. I think Travis Etienne, Joe Mixon, Ramondre, Najee, and Austin Eckler, and potentially if Nick Chubb mixes into that, that's really strong. But the wide receiver room here is definitely needing work. And, yeah, Jelani, I'm not as in on Jelani Woods as other people. I think I think the, the, the tight end room beyond Ferguson potentially lacking depth and the wide receiver room is definitely very questionable, though I do really love your quarterbacks and running backs. All right. We are on to Andrew Loophole. Uh, at Andrew Loophole. So we have another Anthony Richardson, Jonathan Taylor build. You know how you guys, how, you guys know how I feel about that. We talked about that one earlier. But DK Metcalf. Devon A. Shane, uh, George Pickens, Christian uh, Christian Kirk, Terry McLaurin, Lad, Super Lad McCulkey. Love that. I also love if you're to take a quarterback like Anthony Richardson as your first quarterback and you come back and take a really solid guy like Jared Gaff as your second quarterback, I like that. I like that a lot better than, you know, taking another guy with huge risk. Um, and then you got – Justin Tucker is your kicker. That's a little bit of a reach, like I said earlier. And you took two kickers. Again, I feel like there's no reason to have Young Way Koo and Justin Tucker. You could have just taken Young Way Koo. Justin Tucker, you could have got a much better player at that 14th pick. So that's a little bit of a ding. Uh, Derek Carr is a third quarterback. That's pretty solid. I like Noah Fant and Colby Parkinson. That's some good upside for the rest of your tight end room because TJ Hawkinson probably not ready for the beginning of the year. And then you also got Dawson Knox. I don't hate that in the 19th, just in case Dalton Kincaid does get hurt or something happens. Uh, who else we got here? Chuba, Cordell Patterson, Odell Beckham, and Trey, Trey, yeah, Trey Sermon. Yeah, um, man, I'm I'm conflicted. I'm conflicted here. The tight ends are scaring me. The Anthony Richardson, Jonathan Taylor thing scares me. The double kicker thing. 
Odell and Trey Sermon, I feel like, hit waivers. We're going three and a half. Three and a half stars here. You know, again, I just think the Anthony Richardson, Jonathan Taylor uh, combo pack eats into itself a little bit too much. And Hawkinson not being available really hurts that tight end room. May, like, you're really hoping Fant or Parkinson can hold you down until he comes back. The rest, though, is is pretty solid. Like, I like um, – I especially like your wide receivers in Metcalf, Pickens, Kirk, McLaurin, and McConkey. That's a really solid five-pack of wide receivers. Uh, so, yeah, three and a half. All right. Next up, we have at X, capital T, J-E, S-T-E-R. So, oh, at X-T Jester. From the 104, so uh, we start with Patrick Mahomes. We get Saquon Barkley. We get Garrett Wilson. I like that. George Kittle. I think George Kittle um, being overlooked a little bit. He's really good with Brock Purdy. You know, Purdy really looks for him. I think he's going to be just fine this year. So I like George Kittle here. Uh, Trevor Lawrence is your quarterback too. That's that's not bad. Ramondre, Tank Dell, Christian Kirk, Kate Otten. Ooh. That, why does that seem so high to me for Kate Otten? I know it's not because I know he gets drafted right around Pat Farmuth, but when I'm actually seeing it like on the board, I don't like that. <clears throat> Devin Singletary, Jamison Williams, Blake Corum. I love Blake Corum. Romeo Dobbs, Kendra Miller. Kendra Miller already hurt again. Has Alvin Kamara in front of him. Young Wei Ku. Took him a little early, but that's okay. Deontay Foreman, Darnell Mooney, Jelani Woods, Greg Dulcich. I like the Estime pick late here. That's nice. Drew Locke. I think Drew Locke is a sexy late pick too. And Jalen Tolbert. Look, I guys, I was in on Tolbert in Dynasty. He is a character guy. I don't think it's happening. I think uh I don't think he's gonna be able to beat out Brandon Cooks. And to me, that makes him potentially the fourth target in this passing offense. It's not going to happen in any kind of consistent format, but we'll see. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but rating for this, uh, you know, I'm feeling very solid three stars here. Like individually, I like Mahomes, Saquon, Garrett Wilson, and Kittle. But then, like, all the rest of the team are good, in my opinion, but not great. Like, I don't see, like, I don't see the path for Tank Dell to finish as a, wide, a true wide receiver one. I don't see Christian Kirk, really, either being, like, a true wide receiver. I feel like for them, like, if they finish within the top 20, you're going to be really happy. Uh, like, Romeo Dobbs, same thing. He's the most consistent, but he's not the m one that has the most potential. I'm not super in on Darnell Mooney. I'm out on Kendry Miller, I can tell you that. Deontay Foreman, mm, Estime. Mm, I know people really love Dulcich and Woods. Dulcich, Dulcich and Woods are like two really heavy tight end targets. I, I see other guys that just have more natural receiving chops. Like if he wasn't injured, Tucker Craft, for example, I would prefer to have. But that's a, that's a solid three-star build, I feel like. All right. Uh, my guy, Peter Petrovich at Cope 4. Mm -mm -mm. All right. We got to go through this. So Kyler Murray, Jonathan Taylor, Amon Ross St. Brown, Jake Ferguson. Ooh, I love that four-pack. Now, that's a lot of upside. Kyler Murray with the rushing upside. If he can just stay healthy, he's got really good weapons around him. You get Amon Ra, very consistent. Jonathan Taylor. I like – see, I don't hate Jonathan Taylor. I just don't like pairing him with Anthony Richardson because, again, you're kind of eating into yourself. Um, and I don't feel like he has a lot of receiving upside. Jake Ferguson, we've talked about him a couple times now. I like Pacheco, Stevenson, Connor. I, I love that you have a three-pack of running backs here. Jalen Warren. Christian Watson, Will Levis potentially has some upside as a as a QB two. We got Dicker the kicker here in the seventeenth, and on the bench, D 
Daniel Jones as a potential quarterback three. He's sneaky and annoying because, and I had him rated highly last year because I thought he had sneaky rushing upside and then he went and played like shit and then got hurt. So I'm very hesitant to double up on that this year, but I can see why I can see the reasoning because I was making those arguments last season. Jacoby Myers, I like uh, Hunter Henry. We already talked a little bit about. I like him as a solid veteran presence for what is either um, going to be Jacoby Brissett or a rookie quarterback. So I think he has value. Jahan Dotson, Dontavian Wicks, I like that. Cord- Corderell, yeah, I, I get the reasoning. I'm not as in on it, but I get it. Javon Baker, Demarcus Robinson, Zach Ertz is a hilarious pick because. It's so true. Ben Sanat, as much as I love Ben Sanat, presents as kind of a fullback tight end hybrid. And the same way that we saw the bones of Zach Ertz blocking Trey McBride his first year, I think we could maybe see a repeat in Washington, where Zach Ertz will provide low-end value in this format specifically. And then Darius Slayton and Theo Johnson to round it out. I don't hate that. Uh, This is a really solid team. Uh, I I like a lot of what you did. I I like a lot of what you did early, especially. So we're going to go with four stars. Four stars for that amazing four pack of, again, Kyler Murray, Amon Ross St. Brown, Jonathan Taylor, and Jake Ferguson. I feel like that is a really strong core to build around. All right, let's see how many uh, more of these I actually have. One, two, three. Oh, yeah, we definitely have enough for another episode. Jesus. Okay. We are going to do... We're going to do two more. And I think I'll save the rest of... Holy shit. There's even more than I thought. Okay. (laughs) I should probably turn notifications on this off, too. All right, let's go back up here. (sighs) Okay, we're going to squeeze in uh, a couple more, see how many we can get. Mm -hmm. At JWN7113 from the 107, Anthony Richardson, Puka Nakua, Dak Prescott, Josh Jacobs, George Kittle, Kenneth Walker. Um, It's not a bad start. Took a four-pack of wide receivers here. Devonta Smith, Zay Flowers, Jaden Reed, Xavier Worthy. Comes back with Zach Moss. Derek Carr is a solid QB3, especially with on an Anthony Richardson build, so I like that. DeAndre Hopkins and Conklin. It really pretty weak for the wide uh wide receiver for the tight end build. Because you know, I love Kittle, but after that, having only Conklin is a little bit scary. Really strong wide receivers. I, I do love this wide receiver grouping. All like all the way through to Roman Wilson. Like you have legitimately like almost 10 wide receiver options on this team with Puka, Devonta Smith, Zay Flowers, Jaden Reed, Xavier Worthy, DeAndre Hopkins, Brandon Cooks, Tyler Lockett, Roman Wilson. Like that's awesome. And then Khalil Herbert, Braylon Allen, Darius Davis, Jake Bates, Anthony Gold. I super love this. You know what? Oh, man. This, you were so close to being the first five-star build, but I'm giving you four and a half because of that tight end room. You re- I feel like you could have easily, instead of like Reed or Worthy or Nuke, you could have got a better tight end too, I think. Especially over like the, the flowers to Worthy range. I think instead of one of those guys, any one of them, if you'd replace that with another really strong tight end pick, like I I think I would have been super in on this. Like if you would have got like Friar Muth in like the ninth or something, that this would have been a five-star build for me. As it stands though, we're gonna go with four and a half. Four and a half stars. All right. At Alan Ware from, from the 109. Tyreek Hill, Brees Hall. And then double pack, Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert, Nico Collins, and Brock Bowers. See, this is the thing. If you're going to take Brock Bowers, 
I love that you later took Hunter Henry and Noah Fant and Jawan Johnson. Now, Jawan Johnson obviously hurt now, but just the idea that you took the rookie tight end with huge potential, and then we're like, oh, let me get the veteran to back him up. Smart. I like that. Uh, David Montgomery, Raheem Mostert, solid as running back two and three. You took Kirk Cousins a little early to wrap up your quarterback room and get a really solid three-pack. Don't hate that. Uh, Deontay Johnson here is your wide receiver three. Tyje Spears, Portland. So I love, I'm loving this build. Marshawn Lloyd, Shuba Hubbard, Dontavian Wicks, Jermaine Burton, Charlie Jones, Darius Davis, and Jake Elliott rounding things out. Taking the kicker last two. Hey, I don't see any reason. I think this is the one. I think you are the one. You are the first five star of the day. Congratulations, Alan Ware, in the group division. I think this might be my favorite build so far. I, I think this is like the first where I really don't have a problem with any part of aspect of the team. Like if I look at every facet, shout out to Biggs. It's not phases, it's facets. Uh, every facet of this team in terms of the wide receiver, the running back, the tight end, and the quarterback all present as Really strong options to me. So I really like this this build. Uh, all right. Go down to Cruiser two, uh, 128. Sorry, Cruiser 128. At Cruiser 128. Jalen Hurts, Sam Laporta, Kyron Williams, and Derek Henry. That is a sexy start. That is a very sexy start. And then you get Mike Evans and James Cook, Rashid Shaheed, Jaden Reeds, Javante Williams. Waited on that second quarterback, got Russell Wilson. I think that's solid. Gus Bus, Luke Musgrave. Again, I love that you paired Musgrave with Laporta. That's a really solid tight end pack. Jacoby Myers, Xavier Gibson. If Gibson has that true upside for the kick returning, I think that is very viable. Brandon Aubrey, a little bit early, but I get it. I get why people are in on Brandon Aubrey in this format. Jerry Judy, Damien Pierce. I don't believe in Damian Pierce, but I get why he's on rosters. Um, Jatavian Sanders, though, I love that pick. To get a rookie tight end like Sanders to pair with Musgrave and Sam Laporta, I think is huge. And then you get more kick return options in Corderell, Trey Tucker, and Demarcus. And then Joe Flacco as your last pick. Kind of what I was saying to Greg earlier about I really like taking, if you're going to take a backup quarterback at that last pick, you take a backup quarterback for a team with a uh, uh, potentially injury-prone quarterback one. So if Anthony Richardson gets hurt, which he very well could, then Joe Flacco takes over and becomes a viable streaming option. We saw it last year. So I, I like this. Are we? Did we go back-to-back? -back? I think we did. Because, I mean, Laporta, Musgrave, Sanders – Love that. Kyron, Derrick Henry, James Cook, Javante Williams, Gus Bus. Super in love with that running back room. Jalen Hurts and Russ. I don't hate like I uh, it's not quite, it's not quite five. We're not going back to back. We're gonna go four and a half. It's four and a half stars. It is so close though. Four and a half, half stars. I think that's pretty damn good though. All right. Uh, let's do two more and then I got to get out of here because I got to start getting ready for work at eight o'clock and we've already been going a little long. Um, all right. At Steven underscore Roto from the 112. Man, Bijan at 112. That's fucking delicious. I'm fucking jealous. And then you got Kyler and then Sam Laporta made it all the way to you at 301. Yo, who the fuck are you drafting with? Like, the, the DeLorean division, apparently all the rest of your league mates went back in time and to a place where all of these guys like didn't have value, I guess. I don't know what's going on. This is crazy. And then you get Joe Mixon and James Cook, Deshaun Watson, Amari Cooper, Tank Dell, Marquise Brown, Marvin Mims. I don't hate that for a wide receiver room. You get Tony Pollard. I mean, your running backs are just so solid. Trey Benson, our first uh, Ben Sanat sighting. Jahan Dotson, Tyrone Tracy, another Brandon Aubrey. Uh, Roman Wilson, right to my heart. Dontavian Wicks, Bellinger, 
Darnold's probably going to get that starting job for at least the first couple of weeks. And then you get Deontay Hardy and Luke McCaffrey to finish us off. Man, you know what? We are we're ending on a high, guys, because we went five, four and a half, and this is five star build to me. The the fact that you have Bijan, Joe Mixon, and James Cook and Tony Pollard potentially all in those flex spots, and then you also have Sam Laporta. I love Kyler and Deshaun Watson as a two pack. Pairs well with Amari Cooper. You still get the upside of Tank Dell and Hollywood. The, I I I love this team. I really do. I really really. All right, last one here for today. Because again, if you don't see yourself on this video, guys, just please subscribe to the channel and keep an eye out for Sunday. We will be releasing part D of the rating show. Um, because obviously I had a lot more uh answers than I thought I was gonna have. So we will split this up into two episodes. I will release this one early. So if you're watching this and you're like, hey, he didn't get to me, don't worry. We'll get to you on Sunday. All right. So we round out with at Reddit underscore FF as our final review of the day for the Apollo Creed division from the 103. Christian McCaffrey, solid. Dak, Kyron, Brock, okay. I will say Kyron Williams builds. I feel like you you at at, at eleven here instead of Zeke eleven ten. I would have taken Blake Corum, just because just in case anything happens to Kyron, Blake Corum to me becomes an immediate league winner, and I would not want to see that on anybody else's team but mine. So that's maybe right off the bat the only thing I would do different. But I like Dak and Brock. Uh, you come back and get Debo Samuel to pair with Brock. You get Mike Evans, George Pickens, Tank Dell. That's a really solid wide receiver room. For the running backs, McCaffrey, Kyron, James Conner, Zach Moss, Zeke, Charbonnet. I like all of that. Uh, Buck Irving and Deontay, I like it a little less, but they're late picks with some upside. Darnell Mooney, if you're going to, like, again, I'm not that in on Darnell Mooney, but getting him in the 19th. Uh, versus some of the other teams I saw take him earlier, I think is good value at least. Young Wei Ku at 20, Naheem Hines and Jamal Agnew with some return upside. I love that you got Lockett and Jacoby Myers also to really give you kind of a six-pack of wide receivers. The only thing missing on this team is tight end. There are no tight ends to speak of uh, except for Hunter Henry. I think that is going to be a problem for you in the long run. And so four stars, four stars. I think the glaring tight end uh, punting in this format specifically was worth docking an entire star. And it's because, again, just to we'll look at the scoring one more time before we leave here. Tight end gets an extra point per first down and 1.5 PPR. That is insane. So to have only taken Hunter Henry in this format, I think that was a little bit of a faux pas. You can make up for it. You're going to have to really target tight ends on waivers because the rest of your team is really solid. But I'm going to dock a star for the tight end room. And that is where we're going to leave off for today at PJ Hofer 07. You will be first up on our next episode and we will get through the rest of these uh scott fishbowl ratings uh doing the ratings like dave Meltzer on a five-star basis so huge shout out to every single person who a submitted their rosters and were responsive and helped uh, build these episodes i super appreciate you guys best of luck to everyone who is in scott fishbowl i don't do ads or sponsors but please make sure that you remember to make a donation to fantasycares.org. Uh, they are the charity behind Scott Fishbowl. The whole reason that Scott Fishbowl exists is to help um, that charity uh, so that they can continue to do the great work that they do uh, with, um, with uh, kids, uh, especially around the holidays, um, you know, that need an extra boost, um, especially like in gifts and that kind of stuff. So, 
Again, fantasycares.org does a lot of great work. Please make a donation. Uh, thank you guys so much for making it through the show. Super kick that subscribe button. Uh, help that algorithm and algorithmic stuff. Until the next time, I'll catch all of you guys on the flip side. He's running down the middle by the 50. He's at the 30. He's bare chested and banging his chest. Now he runs the opposite way. He runs at the 50. He runs at the 40. The guy is drunk, but there he goes. The 20. They're chasing him. They're not going to get him. Waving his arms, bare chested. Somebody stop Look that out, man. Here comes